Hey, shut up, people. How you doing? Charles here. Got light Nikola Tesla. Isn't that badass? That is some shirts. He sent me like one of five from Republic Aware. Uh, my buddy Dan Mirkovic here in the USA, big, proud Serbian, uh, owns this company, Republic Aware. They make t-shirts, Serbian-related t-shirts. Sent me some awesome ones. So check the description. Uh, and you're gonna love them as much as I do. Oh, there we go. Isn't that badass? I just love this one so much. I get so many compliments. Oh, I can't do that out of this uh, thing. Uh, the other day, I was at the bike shop with this. I had it up like this. And this guy walks by and he says, uh, hey, where can I buy a soccer ball? And I said, well, you can go like right over there, a place called um, Sunken Ship. He had an accent, you know, balcony. And I, I didn't say anything. I didn't even act like I re uh, recognized it. And then he said, Shibio. <laughs> and I said, hey, Vala Tokoje. So I think he was a Croat. And then I had a couple Croats, a uh, husband and a wife. I had this up like I was talking to them. And these two uh, older folks, they were renting a bicycle. I mean, perfect American accent. And they said, so are you from Serbia? And I said, no, nah. I said, it's cool, you recognize them. They said, yeah, we're from Croatia. You know, we've been living in the USA for years. And, you know, and I said, yeah, I said, I actually live there. I just got citizenship. I'm proud, I'm a proud Serbian. They said, oh yeah, great country. You know, we miss that part of the world. That's what they said. Anyway, my friends, this is one of the first nights ouch, that I've had off Ghibli, Whale's Tale. One of the first, night, first nights off I've had in like ungodly amount of time, you know? It's been, well, since I went to Hyannis, last time I uploaded a video, that was like two weeks ago. Now I'm here, and I'm gonna make you a quick video. I got some things I wanna to touch on here, okay? Um, firstly, the things I wanna to touch on are, I got a couple messages here from some American people. Um, a lady from Minnesota, I think these are interesting. You know, everybody likes to hear uh, what American people think about Serbia, uh, et cetera. So let me fight her message. I thought it was really nice. She's from my favorite state here in the United States of America. My favorite state is the state of Minnesota. It's my favorite baseball team. They're in first place. They're playing some damn good baseball. Where in the hell is this app? It's my favorite pastime. There's nothing in it illegal. Well, well it's not illegal here. You can legally smoke marijuana, but it's not marijuana, I promise. I don't really like marijuana. I've smoked it numerous times, uh, but it always gives me, like, I always get really uh, paranoid on it. Anyway, listen to this. This lady says, her name is Christy, Christy, and she's from Minnesota. She says, hey, Charles, I'm leaving 20 years of corporate America behind in a couple weeks. I was researching a trip to Serbia and stumbled upon your YouTube channel. I have to say it's excellent content, and I look forward to a trip there very soon. Thanks for all you do. I wrote her back, and I said, if I can help you in any way, let me know. She wrote me back. She said, thank you so much. I'm a kid from Minnesota. I appreciate your dedication to the Minnesota Twins. And she said, we're leaving for Serbia on Saturday. Our return flight to the USA is October 22nd. The only other place outside of Serbia we even want to visit is Croatia. We're very excited. Who knew a dumb kid like me from Minnesota someday would spend months in the Balkans? Hope you're doing well. Christy, isn't that awesome? The excitement you get from a lot of American people that get to go to Serbia, that get to go to the Balkans, you know? I think that's really, that, that should be uplifting for the Serbian youth. Uh, because so many of the young Serbians are like, oh, it's Serbia. You know, so many people here are dying to go there, you know? Uh, I realize Things outside of your own comfort zone, your own um, land are more exciting. But, you know, that, that should give you something. You know, people really look forward to that. Another lady, listen to this one. I thought this was a really nice message, too. 
let me find it here. I get so many messages and I try to reply to all of them, my friends, but I just can't, honestly. It just takes too much of my time. And this time of year, I just work every single day till from 8.30 in the morning till 9.30 at night, then I eat and I go to bed. Here's one from a lady named Mima. Let me take a drink. <laughs> Ah. Mima says, Charles, I have a question for you. My daughter is 17 years old and she's seriously considering moving to Serbia. She was born and raised in Montreal, Canada, but was coming to Serbia almost every summer for the past couple of years. Our whole family is there and her true friends. The problem is, whenever we mention this to someone in Serbia, they think we're out of our minds for wanting to come back. I get it. They think we live in paradise and the money grows on trees here. They watch too many American movies. I need an input from a different perspective. You know both life in Serbia and North America. It's been 22 years since I've lived in, that I've been living in Montreal, and I forget all the reasons that made me want to come here. Also, whenever I come to Serbia, I come in the summertime and with a lot of Canadian dollars, so I can't see the real picture of people struggling to make ends meet. She speaks English, French, and Serbian, so I'm confident she could find some work there. What are your thoughts? Thanks in advance. You know. That is the most common question I get, probably, from diaspora folks all over the world who haven't been home in years and years and years, and they want to know, Charles, every Serbian thinks we're nuts, we shouldn't come home, uh, but what do you think? And if there's somebody who watches my videos, I just recently received Serbian citizenship after 10 years of living there, never applied for anything, which is offered to me by the Serbian government. Uh, so I'm honored, I'm a Serbian now. So I will know maybe a little bit more of the struggle uh, of the Serbian people. But if you've been watching my videos, you know what I do, how I live my life. My life is a lot different than most people, you know? I live in Serbia from October November, December, January, February, March, April, and then I come back in May, and I live here on this island of Nantucket. Beautiful little island, rich little island. I can make a lot of money here, okay? Uh, between eight and 10 grand is what I make a month here, believe it or don't, uh, which is really phenomenal money. Uh, even if you live in the USA, that's phenomenal money, but for me, that's extra phenomenal money because I take that money and I move to Serbia and I live in Serbia. So, my view is very different, you know, and I, I don't even like to give you input on that because I think that is something you need to really go there, stay there for a month, and then determine if it's right for you. If you have enough savings, if you have enough connections, if you find the right gig, you can live there, okay. But if you work for someone else in Serbia, uh, for another company, you, you know, a basic, basic place, the most you're probably going to make is about eight hundred to a thousand dollars a month, if that. I mean, that's a high end, of course. Uh, if you're into computer, uh, like website uh, design, kako uh, sekaje, uh, all that kind of computer type stuff, you can make really good money. There's a lot of my friends in Serbia who are Serbians who make two grand a month, you know, which is really really good money. Bartenders, some bartenders in Serbia in a really good bar are making really good money every single day. But all of that is, you know, it's it's tough. If you're coming from another country, uh, going into Serbia, I think you'll be disappointed with the amount of money that you're going to be starting out. There's a lot of foreigners who come to Serbia, and I usually recommend the first thing to them is to teach English online to Japanese kids, Korean kids, Chinese kids because they can make really good money if you're a native speaker. You can make good money online, they pay you, you know, well. Uh, there's a lot of my Serbian friends who are making six, seven hundred dollars a month just teaching them online at their own schedule. So those are one of the best things. But me, I work full-time in Serbia from October through May. I'm not gonna tell you how much I make, but I make decent money in Serbia. But I have lots and lots of savings and I make really good money here in the summer and I have a decent amount. Uh, that I've been saving for years and years and years. Prior to going to Serbia, I had quite a bit of money saved. I worked in automobile sales management uh, for a long time before coming to Serbia. 
So I've always done well. I moved out from my parents' house when I was 17. Uh, so I've been able to save and save. And, you know, my life in Serbia is perfect. I love it. I'd much rather live there. Uh, but I do come back here to pad my savings because the amount of money I make in Serbia, maybe if I was born in Serbia, it would be sufficient. But for me, it's not. I like to travel every year to two or three different countries for a few weeks. I like to spend money. I like to go out every day almost. I like to eat out most of the time. And so my life expectations are different, you know. Uh, if you're, you have lower expectations, if, if you can, you're on a budget, I mean, you can make things work. Uh, Serbians just don't, the way I see it in Serbia, and I don't like to speak for the Serbians, I don't like to speak for other people because then it gets silly, but the vast majority of folks I know, they don't revolve, their whole life does not revolve around work, okay? It revolves around social, uh, being social with their friends and family, seeing their friends and family more. Every single day, priority isn't job, or two jobs, or three jobs, you know, like it is in the USA. USA is very expensive. People have to work numerous jobs. If they don't, they can't even afford to live where they are. They can't pay their mortgage, their taxes, their health care, etc. Serbia, lower standards of most things, but people get by, most of them, uh, without working two or three or four jobs, you know, the way I see it. I don't know. My life is different. I don't want to comment on her. I think the best thing for her to do, since she's a Canadian citizen also, email the Canadian Embassy. This is a really good tip. Email the Canadian Embassy and ask for Canadian companies that are doing business in Serbia, in Serbia because that's what the American Embassy does. If you ask them, they'll send you a list of American companies in Serbia and they will, you know, it's easier to get a job there, you know. So that's what I would do. My tip to you. And my life is, once again, the way I live my life is so different from everybody else. And everybody gives me crap all the time. Uh, uh, sorry, I keep forgetting. I, it, it, we have to wear this all the time here. So I keep pulling it over my mouth when I'm talking. Because I feel like I'm talking to a customer. You know, we can't, we have to have this on at all times here in Massachusetts. Uh, but my life is so different. I'm not married. I don't have kids. You know, I'm not interested in that at all. I'm interested in myself. I'm a hedonist. I want to please myself and enjoy my life. Smoke when I want, drink when I want, go out every day if I want, eat what I want in Serbia, whatever. Travel around the world. Uh, I don't want a dog. I don't want a cat. I don't want a kid. I don't want a wife, okay? So my views on things are so different than everybody else. So to ask a, a complete stranger if somebody should do something is, is, is wrong uh, because we all have our different little path in life. And people judge me all the time. Man, you're getting old. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do this. You know, follow me, kudos. I don't care. I don't want your opinion. I don't need it. You know, I do what I want. Okay? Uh, so I hope I answered your question. And, and sorry for using profanity. I wasn't using it toward you, Mima. Uh, now, what I want to discuss here is the important stuff. Here's what's going on in my life at this very moment. Um, I'm a new citizen to Serbia. I didn't ask for this. It came upon me. I've wanted it for years, but I never applied because I was too embarrassed because I don't speak the language. But the Serbia government reached out to me, gave it to me, passed it. I'm a citizen, okay? That's kind of a scary thing. As soon as I got citizenship, I left. It's not because I'm a gastarbeiter or a, a, somebody who's ditching Serbia. I love Serbia. I want to live in Serbia. But I like to live a life with a lot of money. So I come here. So everything was already planned. I was coming here anyway. It wasn't that I got citizenship and left. You know, like a lot of people, I'm going to go back there. I'm going to retire there, okay? But... Um, When you become a citizen of another country, dual citizenship, it's legal in the USA to have two or three citizenships, but there is responsibilities that go along with uh, citizenship, you know. There's lots of things, and that's something I was totally unprepared for. Uh, firstly, I have to learn the language. If I'm going to get around and get along and, and 
function, I must do that. So that is what I'm searching for right now is a great school, a great teacher uh, that can teach me. Uh, I know a lot of words. I understand a lot of Serbian, but speaking, I have no confidence um, because I just don't do it. I'm lazy and all my friends speak English and I just rely on the smart Serbian people. But I've got to learn Serbian language firstly before anything else. Secondly, uh, one of the second things that comes with citizenship that is, is kind of concerning uh, is my military service. Somebody else messaged me. They said, Charles, did you check? Are you responsible for military service in Serbia? And that is a question I do not know. So question number one, or yeah, question number one, do I have to fulfill some sort of military service at being 43 years of age? November 7th, I turned 44 years of age. I don't believe that is the case in Serbia if you're at a certain age, but that's something I need to find out. Uh, and this is something I'm doing here uh, prior to returning to Serbia. Uh, I've got a lawyer friend uh, who I'm going to message. I've got lots of lawyer friends there. Uh, I've got friends in every faucet of uh, Serbian employment, if you will. But I have an immigration lawyer that I'm going to message and just ask him here to answer my questions. I don't know if I do. I have no idea. And I hope I don't because I think that is a violation of your first citizenship. If you have to do military service in a different country, that is a violation of your first citizenship. And I do not want to jeopardize my American citizenship. So I got to find that out. Number two, question two that I have, I wrote these on a note. So that's what I'm doing at this moment. In Serbia, on your lichna karta and on your passport, I believe also, they have a number. Here in the USA, we have a social security number. It's a nine digit number that follows you throughout your life. That's how you get an automobile loan. That's how you purchase things. Um, it kind of grades you. You have a grade, like 820 is perfect credit. Anything under like 620 is bad credit. And it based on if you pay your bills on time, how much credit you have, how many credit cards you have, what your credit limit is, how much credit limit you're using, all these different factors that grade you. Um, but in Serbia, they have a YMBG, JMBG number. The JMBG number is similar to the social security number. It's a number that kind of tells a little bit about you. And I need to know, how do I activate that? Do I have to go somewhere? Do I have to activate it? Uh, because in Serbia, you need to, uh, they get retirement so similar to social security. I have the ability to draw uh, a retirement from my paying in from my job that I'm working. Uh, I need to know, question two, do I have to register it, the Yamabaga? What do I have to do? Do I have to do something with that number or does it automatically go into effect when I start working and it pays in on, in the system or what? I don't know. Question number three I have is voting. I'm a huge supporter of voting rights. I think voting is what makes a democracy a democracy. I know here in the USA we have really literally two choices mostly. Uh, we can vote Republican or Democrat, more or less, okay? Some states, smart states, have independent candidates like Bernie Sanders. Uh, the state of Maine had a independent candidate for Senate, uh, but it's very rare. Most people just say, ah, I'm not gonna waste my vote. Here in the USA, we have the Green Party, we have the uh, Libertarian Party, we have the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, but it's mainly Democrats, Republicans. In Serbia, I want to vote. I believe in voting. I'm going to vote. I vote here in the USA religiously. I think it's my right, something I'm forced to do. I don't think it's something, it's, uh, I don't think it's something you have a choice on. I think you have to. Uh, it's part of being a member of society, okay? So in the USA, we have our presidential election. It's the first Tuesday in November is our presidential election. I'm definitely voting. And I'm definitely 
not voting for Donald Trump, and I'm definitely not voting for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Uh, Kamala Harris, I think is how you say her name. I don't care. I'm not voting for Joe Biden because of his uh, comments on Serbia. Even though normally I vote for Democrat, I didn't vote for Hillary Clinton either. I voted for Jill Stein in 2016, the Green Party. This time I'll probably vote for Howie Hawkins. He's the Green Party candidate again, or there's Joe Jorgensen of the Libertarian Party, which I'm starting to become more of a Libertarian in a way. So I'm kind of fighting between the Green Party and Libertarian. I know they're totally different if you look at every single thing, but you know, I don't like to consider myself one way or the other. Uh, but in Serbia, I need to know, do I need to, uh, do I need to register to vote? Uh, do you have to register as Serbska Napredna Stranka or Socialist Party of Serbia or Dveri or can you just go in and, and vote? Like in the county I'm from, in Illinois, you have to pick, which I think is so much, I think it's such bullshit. In the county I'm from, you have to register as a Democrat or a Republican. Uh, when you go in and register, I think that's bullshit. So when I vote in the primary, I can only vote for the, the Democratic candidates because I'm a registered Democrat in the state of Illinois. Now I'm in the state of Massachusetts uh, here. So, but I think that's just a violation of privacy. You shouldn't have to tell somebody. It's a private decision who I want to vote for. I don't know in Serbia. Do I need to do that? Or am I automatically enrolled in the voting rolls in Serbia? And the other question, is where do I vote? How do I vote? I don't know how. Do I get a ballot? Do I walk into a specific facility? I don't know. That's something else I need to find out. Uh, the next question, number four. Healthcare. Enrolling in the social healthcare of Serbia, which will be a huge, huge thing for me. Uh, here in the United States of America, it's just ungodly expensive here. Um, people can't afford it. You go to the hospital. Philip Rakic, my roommate here, he cut his thumb. I think it was his thumb. He had to go to the emergency room and get four stitches. It was $1,500, I think is what it was. I don't remember. I mentioned it in another video. Just for an hour in the hospital, $1,500, okay? Healthcare here is ungodly expensive. It's based on your age, your health, if you smoke, if you don't smoke etc. Pre-existing conditions, all these different things. But in Serbia, it's easy, it's free. Not free, but if you're working somewhere, it's paid for. So if I break my leg, I go to the hospital, the public hospitals, the government-run hospitals, and they will take care of me, okay? Uh, which is a huge benefit for me, so I don't have to pay thousands of dollars just for a policy that I can afford. And the other thing here in the USA, when you buy an insurance policy, I used to sell health insurance. I was a licensed health and uh, life and health insurance agent. And here, so many people look at a deductible. Deductible is the key to an affordable health plan because to have a monthly payment you can afford, you're going to have to have a higher deductible. That means maybe my deductible is $5,000. Uh, that means if I go to the hospital for some emergency thing and the bill is $4,999, my insurance pays nothing. I'm responsible for, for paying the deductible before the insurance kicks in. Does that make sense? Uh, if my bill is $5,500, I have to pay the $5,000 and then the insurance covers $500. That makes my uh, monthly payments affordable. If I want zero deductible, that means my payments each month are going to be ungodly expensive where nobody can even afford it. So, so many Americans don't even have health coverage. It's unbelievable. The greatest country in the world, we don't even have that, you know. But in Serbia, you have that. Uh, Serbians always complain when I say it's free health care. If you're paying, if you're working somewhere, you get it, and society's covered. They're not going to let you die on the street. Even though service, it's got its problems, of course, like every system. I've heard so many horror stories, Serbians saying they have to bribe money, you know, to bribe a doctor at the public facility to get in higher on the list and all that. But still, I think it's a better system. As a foreign person who's known in the media and things like that, I'll probably be taken care of anyway. I hate to say that, uh, but private clinics are still affordable in Serbia. 
uh, other question, dental coverage. I don't even know if I need dental insurance because dental is so affordable in Serbia. You can get a root canal. I had a root canal done in Chicago years ago, $1,000, okay? In Serbia, I had the same thing for $80. Uh, I'm gonna get my all my teeth redone, you know? My teeth are crooked. I have some in, impacted teeth that need removed. Here in the USA, it was gonna be thousands upon thousands of dollars. I, I didn't even do it. But in Serbia, now I wanna get it done, so I'm considering dental insurance if I even need to do that, you know? And what else? I think those are the major things that, yeah, those are like the major things I had written down that I'm really concerned about to see uh, what else is there. There's got to be some other things about coming a new citizen in a new, oh yeah, the other one. Let's say number five. Getting a short, like a small loan. Uh, I'm looking to purchase a property, like a Vika Vitsa, maybe a house somewhere outside of Novi Sad, preferably a decent little place outside of Novi Sad within driving distance to Novi Sad. Uh, also a Vika Vitsa anywhere in Serbia, just some nice place, really remote, beautiful location. Uh, and I'm checking into like a loan, since I'm a Serbian citizen, and opening a bank account. As an American citizen, opening a bank account anywhere in the world, it's somewhat difficult. My buddy at Agricole Bank and the bank, uh, what's the bank under my office? Banca Intesa. I went in there to open a bank account and they said we can't really do it for an American because we have to report monthly to the IRS because as an American citizen, we're one of a few countries in the world, American citizens are still required to pay taxes if they live outside of the USA, which is such a mess. So checking on taxation and all of that stuff is gonna be another thing I need to check on but also a bank loan. I messaged my buddy at Agricole Bank. He's a big will of the Agricole Bank here in Novi Sad. I messaged him actually today, and he said, yes, you qualify. I told him how much money I had, how much I make here in the USA, and how much I make there. He said, well, your amount you make is substantial, uh, so it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, so that's another thing that I'm checking into that's gonna be really exciting, uh, really excited for that. Lastly, number six is driver's license. Uh, I really want to get my Serbian driver's license uh, so I can drive a car in Serbia. Last 10 years in Serbia, I've never driven. Not one single time have I driven a car in Serbia. The main reason you don't need to, you know. When you compare the country of Serbia, uh, to the USA in land size. It's closest in size to the state of Maine. Uh, but public transportation in Serbia is phenomenal. It's affordable, it's efficient, it's on time. It's great, so I've never needed it. If I need to go from my office in Novi Sad to my office in Osijek or Zagreb, there's a bus. A bus that's on time, it's, on, it's always on time, it arrives on time. A few buses are a little bit late, but nothing horrible like it is here in the USA. Public transportation here in the USA is for poor people, low class citizens who cannot afford to drive. I take it here only in Boston to drive from Boston down to Hyannis on a bus and then a, a, a ferry over to this island. But most places in the USA I would never take public transportation because it's all low class citizens. It's crime ridden, it's dirty, they treat you like shit, it's not uh, on time. But in Serbia it is. So but, that being said, I want to purchase a home. I've been looking at some in Futog, um, in some other little places, Veternik, outside of Serbia, very affordable. Uh, my buddy lives in, um, what's the name of that place? Despot Despotovo. And another friend lives in Tamarin, which are like 30 minutes from Novi Sad. You can buy a big house with a big yard with acreage with it, orchards, you can have a garden, big house for 30, 40, 50 grand, you can get it. You know, that's something I could pay cash for, but I would like to get a little loan for it so I don't have to spend my money on it. Um, but if I do that, then I'm going to have to have a car that I'm going to be able to drive back and forth. So I want to get my driver's license. So that's something I need to check into. Uh, will my American driver's license transfer into a Serbian driver's license, or do I have to take the test again? 
my best friend, I was telling him I want to go to Serbia and get my driver's license. My best friend, uh, one of my best friends, my two best friends. I have two of them, Uroš Milic and Darko Stojokovic. Uroš is in Kaluzirić and Darko's here in California now with his girlfriend. Uh, but I was telling Darko, I said, yeah, I want to go get my driver's license in Serbia as soon as I get back. He said, man, he said, I love Serbia. And he said, but the worst thing for me was getting a driver's license. He said, you schedule your appointment, you show up early, you're waiting there forever. Then you have to get a certain stamp at this place, you have to go here and do this. He said, it was the biggest nightmare for me. I don't know if that's true. I have connections, so maybe it'll be a little bit easier for me, I hope. Uh, but that is something I have to do. I've got my Lichnikov, I've got my passport, I wanna get my driver's license, I wanna get a car, a little house, a Vikivica, so I can be an actual Serbian. Uh, also, business, opening a business as a Serbian citizen. I understand it as a foreigner because I checked into it before, but I think it's a little bit easier, a little less red tape uh, as a Serbian citizen. I've got some really good ideas. Uh, a friend of mine's making a website for me. Boyan is his name. He's doing that at this moment. So I've got a really cool website coming up because I've got some really good ideas of opening a business, but I want to make sure everything's legal, done by the book because I don't want to have any problems. A lot of people hate me instantly since I'm an American who's a Serbian and I don't speak Serbian language, so I want to make sure that I don't get turned in for doing something illegally. Um, and that's it, my friends. Oh my God, I've talked for 31 minutes. And anyway, that's it for this video. I'm going to continue to smoke, drink, eat some food, go to bed, live this consecutive life of work, 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 but make, 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 make. So when I go to Serbia, I will have a good amount of money and I can live a great Balkan lifestyle, you know. Uh, anyway, that's it. I think I'm gonna be in Serbia the second week of October. Uh, my parents, I don't think I mentioned it, my, I spoke to my mother. She, her and my father do not want me coming back to home, which is really disappointing. It's been a year since I've seen them. Uh, but they're really terrified of coronavirus, and coronavirus here in the USA is just rampant. Uh, so they think it's really risky. My dad's 73, I think, or he'll be 73 in October, 74. Uh, so they don't want to be around it. I'm here in Massachusetts. Numbers are ticking up, and being on a plane, they think it's risky. She said, I know we love you, but I don't think we want you to come home this time. So I'm gonna wait on that. So I think I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna take a short trip, trying to find out where I can go. Uh, I don't wanna to go to California to see my best friend that I usually do, because California is a nightmare. A lot of states are putting 14 day quarantines if you go to hotbed states. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna go back, go to a Caribbean island that doesn't require uh, quarantine, and then fly right back to Serbia. Second week of October, maybe first week. Anyway, my friends, that's it for me. Ciao, ciao.